Hey there, what's up? Welcome into the show. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. It's a beautiful Thursday. All of my legends and real ones out there for watching, I want to thank you because no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's 49ers Report a part of your day. I'm Chase Sr. Coming up, loaded show here on the rundown. Is Brock Purdy going to get a bag? We're going to take a look ahead to how much money Purdy could demand on that contract extension, which is looming. And we'll be talking about that a lot around this juncture of next year. We're going to look at some blockbuster trade targets for San Francisco as well. Get creative, hop in the shoes of John Lynch, get in that Niners front office, and try to improve this football team. Also, I have my favorite draft targets for San Francisco at every single position NFL draft coming your way at the end of April. And then we'll round out with segment number four, mailbag time. You can get involved right now. Use the hashtag 49ers. Or if you send in a super chat, you're guaranteed to be featured right here on the show. And with point number one here, Brock Purdy going to get a bag. Niners owner Jed York was talking from the NFL owners meetings this week. And he said, anytime your quarterback is making $40 million per year, that's a good thing because that signals that that quarterback is really good. And I think that's going to be the starting point for what Purdy could earn in 2025 and beyond, depending on how they maneuver that contract extension. But the average annual value is what we're talking about here. And you look at the top 10 highest paid quarterbacks in the league, Joe Burrow, $55 million average annual value. Justin Herbert, $52.5 million per season. Lamar Jackson, 52 even per year, followed by Jalen Hurts at 51. Kyler Murray, 46 plus. Deshaun Watson, 46 even. Kirk Cousins, 45 million per year. Patrick Mahomes, 45. Josh Allen at 43. And Matthew Stafford at $40 million. And if Purdy plays in 2024 like he did in 2023, he's going to be making a lot of money. And he's going to want to make up for what he has not gotten up to this point because he's been the best bargain deal in the National Football League because he was Mr. Irrelevant and drafted in the seventh round. With that, let's pop up our first question of the day, and let's hear from you. Would you pay Brock Purdy more than $40 million per year? This is also the poll question for our live stream. 66% yes, 34% no. Type Y for yes, type N for no, and let us know. Tony Mesa, no. Abdul Muhammad saying yes. Looks as though the fan base a little bit split taking a look at those early tallies. Alexander Ryan getting us started with the super chat here. Thoughts on the 49ers missing out on Luis Reese, a rugby fan, would have loved to get him because it's a free trial, could be dangerous with the Chiefs. Yeah, signing with the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chiefs are just such a great organization all around. Brett Veach, great general manager, Clark Hunt, Great owner. Andy Reid, fantastic head coach. They have a really good roster. They're willing to take chances on players like a Matt Areza at punter. And now here they are signing Lewis Reese to see what he can do as a rugby player. Jordan Mailata, Philadelphia Eagles, former rugby player. Late round draft pick for Philadelphia. He's ended up being one of the best tackles in the game. Niners didn't go that route. Here's our Super Chat menu for today. It's a thirsty Thursday. Let's go. All Super Chats get a shout out. $10, you enter the March jersey raffle. Last call for that because this is our last live stream of the calendar month. So anytime you send in a $10 super chat, you get in the running to win a Niners jersey. Our guy Gumpwolf won the previous one. $20, we'll do 20 push-ups or jumping jacks. $50, you can sign our Niners helmet. $100 for a shotgun or a beer bong. If you want to support the show and you can't donate, that's all good at the end of the day. You being here means a lot to us. Hit that thumbs up icon, like the video, subscribe to the show, comment, share your thoughts, share the video, most importantly, be a real one. Those are free ways to support the movement and everything that we do here at Chat Sports. Our live programming schedule today is sponsored by Game Time. If you want the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed, Game Time is the only ticketing app that you should be using. And it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, as we're showing you right here, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. 
It is opening day across Major League Baseball right now. I have a big screen in front of me watching Houston Astros, New York Yankees, very good series. If you want to go to a San Francisco Giants game, go to a Major League Baseball game. Elsewhere across the league with the other teams in the league as well, you can go to game time, get those tickets, and you get $20 off when you use the code chat sports. That's $20 off when you use the code chat sports. That link is hanging out down for you in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. We are going to do a mailbag today. Four segments coming your way. Last segment will be a mailbag. So get those questions in starting right now. Make producer Chip's job a lot easier. Hashtag 49ers or send in a super chat. And if you're ready to talk some Niners, Make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and you like the video. 140 people watching live, only 31 likes. Where is everybody at right now? Hello? Who's home? Anybody home? Hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. Francisco Avila said, let's go. Mike Concho calling the people who didn't like the video bums. I agree. Come on, bums. Like the video. We still love you for watching. Rob Smith, let's go Mets. Oh, no. Rob Smith, no, not a Met guy. Lawrence said San Francisco 49ers. All right, we're going to start off with the segment on Brock Purdy. How much is he going to demand with that looming contract extension? Continue to like the video, and with that, let's start the show right now. Welcome into the show. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, as always, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day on the docket. How much will Brock Purdy demand on his new contract extension, which is set to be a big talking point this time next year? Some major rumors around how much it might cost to keep number 13 with the 49ers on a new deal. And we're having this conversation this week partially because Niners owner Jed York from the NFL owners meetings in Orlando this week said this about his franchise quarterback. It's a good problem when your quarterback is one of the highest paid guys on your team and in the league. It's what the market is. Brock is going to ask for something that no one has ever asked for before, in negotiating with our own players is what he meant there. I don't know how many players are making over $40 million annually as a quarterback right now. We have the answer to what Jed York just said because we're going to take a look at the top 10 highest paid quarterbacks because that is a backbone of this conversation. And I'm telling you right now, Mr. York, $40 million is going to be the starting point for Brock Purdy. And since he's made no money pretty much, under a million dollars every year since he was Mr. Relevant, final pick in the draft, he should try to make up for the money that he has not gotten and the production and the wins that he's given San Francisco. Of course, this list of the highest paid quarterbacks is going to change when that next hot shot young quarterback gets a bag. But when you look at this list of the top 10 highest paid quarterbacks, it gives you a good indication of where Purdy's new deal might lie. Joe Burrow, highest paid quarterback in the league, $55 million. Justin Herbert, 52 and a half. Lamar Jackson, 52 even. Jalen Hurts, $51 million, average annual value. Kyler Murray at 46.1. Deshaun Watson, 46 even. Kirk Cousins at 45 flat. Patrick Mahomes is there as well. And then you have Josh Allen at 43 million and Matthew Stafford at 40 million to round out that list. And in looking at that grouping of quarterbacks, let's compare Purdy to those other quarterbacks because he can take to the negotiating table a lot of these points, which gives him the leverage in these talks with San Francisco. Purdy is younger than Matthew Stafford, who's making 40 mil. Purdy is 4-1 in the NFL playoffs, pretty much, if you don't count that Eagles NFC Championship game when he got knocked out early, Josh Allen, on the other hand, is 5-5. Five and five. Kirk Cousins is 1-4, and four, and he's making 45 mil. Purdy has been better. He's been more available. He's been healthier than the likes of Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray. And this past year in 2023, the numbers don't lie. The eye test doesn't lie. 
Purdy was better than Jalen Hurts in 2023. You want to say, well, Purdy had all these weapons. Jalen Hurts didn't. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, DeAndre Swift, one of the best offensive line in football. Brock Purdy didn't have that good of an offensive line, and he also had some really good weapons, but elite quarterbacks have really good weapons. Great teams have great players. Moving on on that list, Herbert, he's played in one playoff game. He was a part of a historic collapse in 2022 against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Purdy was statistically better than Lamar Jackson this past campaign. And Lamar won MVP. These are all things that Purdy and his camp, Purdy and his agent, can take to the negotiating table. And the San Francisco 49ers can't tell him that he's lying because we just provided all of the statistics and all of the trends and all of the numbers that paint a picture and are true. Now, of course, Purdy is not a better quarterback than Joe Burrow. But Joe Burrow in his career has had injury concerns. Purdy has a little bit with the elbow. He's not better than Patrick Mahomes. And he might not be as gifted as some of these other quarterbacks, right? But Purdy has been statistically productive. He's been better as far as some of the numbers go. And he's won bigger and won more flat out outright than some of the other quarterbacks on that list as well. With that, let's pop up our poll question for today's show. Over, under, $40 million on Brock Purdy's new deal. O for over, U for under. We're live right now on the 49ers report, and I'm looking at our poll question. So far, 214 votes. Would you pay Purdy more than 40 mil per year? 66% yes, 34% no. What's the comment section going to say? That's up to you. Today's 49ers report, by the way, is sponsored by Game Time, the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices, show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds on the Game Time app with two taps. I'm tired of using these other ticketing apps in which it takes me forever just to buy a ticket. And Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute tickets, especially if you're a busy guy like me. You can find exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And right now, opening day across Major League Baseball. You want to go to a San Francisco Giants game? You want to go to a Major League ballpark? Across the nation, you can do that with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Chat Sports. That's code Chat Sports, C H A T S P O R T S, for $20 off your purchase. We'll put that link down below in the show notes and in the comment section of this video. In order for Brock Purdy to get a bag, he has to do a couple of things, and he has to check off a couple of boxes here. He's going to have to play well. He's going to have to show that 2022 and 2023 weren't a fluke. He's also going to have to show that he can counter adjust to how the NFL and defenses and defensive coordinators adjust to him, and that's partially on Purdy. It's also on Kyle Shanahan. He's going to have to stay healthy, and if he keeps winning, if he keeps producing, he's going to get paid because he has been a bargain up to this point. Probably the best value deal in the National Football League. Rookie year? Base salary of $705,000. 2023, base salary of eight hundred seventy dollars This upcoming year, $985,000. Final year of his rookie contract, $1.1 million. So for him, in year four, he's finally going to make more than a million. And it's only $1.1. And you already know with those California taxes, it's going to plummet way below that. And then he's set to become an unrestricted free agent in 2026. What's wild about this, too, is that Purdy is going to count less against the cap than these quarterbacks here. Skylar Thompson, Shane Buchel, Aiden O'Connell, Sam Ellinger, Nathan Peterman, and then two other quarterbacks on this Niners team, Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen. That's why it's so important for San Francisco to capitalize on this Super Bowl opportunity right now, because once you pay him 40 plus million dollars, Going to be more difficult to pay other players on this roster. Purdy in 2023, he plays like this in 2024. Jed York's going to be writing a check. He was third in passing touchdowns, 
First in yards per attempt and deep ball completion rate. Fourth in pressured completion percentage. Second in red zone completion rate. True passer rating QBR EPA number one. His receiver target separation was 14th in the league. You know what that requires? To have a good deep ball completion rate or YPA or completion rate in general? Accuracy. And that's what Purdy has. And his deep ball catchable rate percentage? Number one in the NFL. I thought he had a weak arm and couldn't push the ball downfield. That's cap. I think Purdy deserves props, honestly, for playing that well in 2023, coming off a major injury. A lot of people didn't expect him to even be ready for the regular season. He was ready to go day one of training camp. He was working on his body. He took his recovery very seriously, and that led to a breakout campaign for number 13. And his numbers his first two years. 2022, Rook, Mr. Irrelevant. One of the most fascinating storylines that we've seen in NFL history. 5-0, and completed 67% of his passes, nearly 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, 4 picks, yards per attempt, 8.1. Then this past year, 12-4, and 69.4% completion rate. He threw for almost 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns, 11 picks, and the yards per attempt blossomed to 9.6. Who is to say that with a full offseason, finally, with this coaching staff, with this roster, for himself, and another year under his belt, as he becomes wiser and more mature as a quarterback, he can't get better. Brock Purdy has room to grow, room to improve, he can continue this ascent. Make sure you give me a follow on X. Make sure you give me a follow on Instagram. Let me know what you think about this segment. Let me know what you think about this show. As always, appreciate your support. And don't forget to subscribe right here to the San Francisco 49ers Report. Here's our Super Chat menu. 170 people hanging out with us on this Thursday. All Super Chats get a shout out. $10, you enter our March jersey raffle. $20, push-ups or jumping jacks. $50, you can sign our 49ers helmet right here. Bunch of real ones and a bunch of legends getting gold stickers on this Niners helmet. $100 for a shotgun or a beer bung. And another reminder, going to be doing a mailbag segment number four during our live show today. Hashtag 49ers. Send in a super chat. Start getting those in right now. JT Collins said no consistency. Brock Purdy has been pretty damn consistent. This organization hasn't had a lot of consistency at the quarterback spot. Yeah, Nestor Cortez for the Yankees getting shelled. New York down 3-0 to Houston. Coming up next here on the show. Blockbuster trade targets. About to get into it. Get a sip of water and we'll rock with segment numero dos. Somebody said Dak is consistent. He's consistent as far as getting bounced early in the playoffs. All right, blockbuster trade targets coming up. Let's go. Yo, what's good? Welcome into the show. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report and coming your way. Blockbuster trade targets for the Niners here. Players San Francisco could target to make a splash and bring in some star power right before the start of the 2024 season. First, we have just an insanely competitive subscriber battle going on between two powerhouse channels here at Chat Sports. The Raiders Report, the 49ers Report, and look how close it is. The Raiders this week have picked up 79 new subscribers. The 49ers report right behind them at 76,000 subscribers. Now, the Raiders report is the larger channel, but I want to beat Raiders report host Mitchell Renz, and I want to claim a victory because I hate losing more than I hate winning, but we'll celebrate some dubs. If you want Niners content every day, that's going to make you think. It's going to allow you to learn. That's going to teach you about the game of football. Be informative, entertaining, insightful. That's what we do on a daily basis. Hit that sub button right now. Blockbuster trade target number one. It's a player who we've talked a lot about here on the 49ers report, and that is Patrick Sertan II 
of the Denver Broncos. Why a certain trade makes sense to me. The Broncos, ladies and gentlemen, are a rebuilding organization. And Sertan is due a contract extension. The Broncos have so many needs on this roster. They don't have a second round pick. This is all part of the Russell Wilson fallout in which they don't have a lot of money. So why does it make sense for a rebuilding team to pay top dollar to a cornerback when you have more pressing needs? You have to find a quarterback to begin with. And would Patrick Sertan want to play in Denver for the long haul? And this Russell Wilson fallout has made Denver have to cut some really good players, including a four-time second-team All-Pro in Justin Simmons, who leads the NFL in interceptions since coming into the league in 2016. So I know that some Broncos insiders have said, Patrick Sertan's not going to get dealt. But to me, when you read the tea leaves, and if you look at what the Broncos have done, it would almost be organizational malpractice to pay him big-time dollars to pay top-tier money to a cornerback when you have all of these other needs, when you could just get back draft picks in order to build your football team. And for San Francisco, number two corner or a number one corner opposite of Charvarius Ward, a little bit of an issue, but also as part of that, Ward and Diamador Lenore are due for new contract extension. So you could have Patrick Sertan, Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore as your top three corners for 2024. You could sign Sertan to a long-term deal and then you reassess what you want to do with Ward and or Lenore. Because right now, if the season were to start today, this is your cornerback depth chart. Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore in the slot, that's a really good one-two punch. And they were really good for San Francisco in 2023. The weakness, though, Ambry Thomas, who, to his credit, after the bye week, played good football, was not good in the playoffs, and then he got one snap in the Super Bowl. So clearly, the Niners lost trust in him then, but they didn't have trust in him in 2022 either when he barely played, and this was coming after a rookie campaign in which I thought he performed well coming down the stretch. And I think the foundation for a Patrick Sertan trade was kind of laid by the luxurious need trade between Kansas City and Tennessee. Sertan obviously is the better player, more accomplished player, has more pedigree. He's going to cost a little bit more. But there was all this talk about the Denver Broncos for sure getting a first-round pick in exchange for Sertan. Legereus Sneed was a borderline all-pro. He's also still a pretty young player. He didn't get anywhere close to a first-round pick. A third and a seventh for Sneed? Now, part of that was Tennessee having to give Sneed a new contract extension, paying him about $19 million per year, but Patrick Sertan is due a contract extension as well. So maybe a second-round pick gets it done for Patrick Sertan and another pick, fifth round. You have a lot of compensatory picks at your disposal, I would do that in a heartbeat if I'm San Francisco, and then you sign him to a contract extension later with some of the money that you can't use right now from the Eric Armstead release because that was a post-June 1 designation, and you can't use that money by rule in NFL free agency, but you can use it a little bit later for a player like Brandon Ayuk and or Patrick Sertan. Let's go. Would you trade and sign Sertan, or would you draft a cornerback in the first or second round. What would you do if you were in the shoes of general manager John Lynch? We want to hear from the faithful in the comments section. Today's 49ers report is sponsored by the best, the number one, and the largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America. Football season may be in the rear view, but the action on the floor and on the baseball diamond is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court or a great duel, on the baseball diamond. There's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments and baseball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fan fantasy sports app, where you could turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1,000 with NBA, NHL, college basketball, Major League Baseball entries today on prize picks. 
Again, it's America's number one fantasy sports app. Conference tournaments in the rear view, but the big tournament is here. NBA playoffs are coming up, and again, the Major League Baseball regular season. And here are some of the selections that we like for some sweet 16 play in the NCAA tournament. P.J. Hall, Clemson, more than 16 and a half points against Arizona. Jane Ledee, more than 20 and a half points for San Diego State against UConn. And Armando Baycott, the college basketball legend, more than 16 and a half points against Alabama. Win big money. Withdraw your winnings. Pick more, pick less. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And when you use that link, you get a $100 deposit match. Blockbuster trade target, numero dos, Marshawn Lattimore of the New Orleans Saints. He's been said to be on the trade block, according to Jeremy Fowler, NFL insider for ESPN. Teams think that Lattimore could be available, and here's why he could get traded. Saints are always against the cap. They really prove that the salary cap is real, but not really. The issue with Lattimore, he has missed 17 games over the last two years. And Niner fans know this all too well. Signing, trading for, having a lot of injury-plagued players, which grows to be tiresome, and you get fatigued by it for sure. But Lattimore is still only 27 years old. He did stay healthy basically every year prior to 2022. And when right, he's one of the top cornerbacks in the game. Here are the financial implications of a trade. If the Saints were to trade him pre-June 1, $31.3 million in dead money, $16.7 million in cap savings. If they traded him post-June 1, uh, $10.5 million in dead money, $3.9 million in cap savings. But here's the deal. For the Saints to trade him and for the Niners to acquire him, if it doesn't work out, Lattimore has no guaranteed money after 2024. 2023 season was cut short because of injury, but still played solid football. Pro football focus overall grade of 67.4, coverage grade of 69.1, 48 tackles, eight pass breakups, and one interception. And two times a year, he's been going up against Mike Evans, who every single season that he's been in the NFL has had at least 1,000 receiving yards. Lattimore has been on an island with them. He's been on lockdown mode against Mike Evans. That's the caliber of player that we're talking about here. If you were to pick a corner between Patrick Sertan and Marshawn Lattimore, who would you go with? I'm going Sertan. The trade for him will cost more than Lattimore. Lattimore is already making a decent amount of money. You do have the no guaranteed money after 2024. That's somewhat appealing, but I'm going with the younger, less injured, and better player here in Sertan. Trade idea and trade target number three would be a trade-up in the 2024 NFL Draft for San Francisco. Currently, the Niners are slotted at pick number 31. And what the Niners could theoretically do here, if there's a player that they really like, they could trade up for an edge, a young edge to pair up with Nick Bosa for years to come. They could address what is the biggest need on this team right now, and that's offensive line. They could trade up for a stud-wide receiver because you're not sure what the future of Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel is as of this moment. Or you could just trade up for the best player available if there's a player that you were just salivating over, who you had high on your board, who somehow fell, and you think they're going to be a bona fide superstar, as Stephen A. Smith would say. Some trade, trade up candidates here for the Niners. A couple of players that I would love for the Niners to trade up for if it's within range, let's just call it, in the early 20s, or if they want to make a splash move, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Talius Fuaga out of Oregon State can play guard right away, or he could be a Pro Bowl level tackle right away, in my opinion. He has a streak of nastiness and physicality. He's also played in a zone scheme, and he even said at the NFL Combine, I could play in an offense like what the Niners have just moves so well for his size. And I love the punch that he's able to pack. A lot of the same things I said about Fuaga, I could say about Troy Fatanu out of Washington. He's an offensive tackle whose arms are a little bit shorter. Some people think he's a guard. I think that he can play tackle at the next level. 
Chop Robinson, very quick first step, elite 10-yard split, ran a great 40-yard dash at 250-plus pounds. Some people compare him to Micah Parsons, fellow Penn Stater. I think maybe they do that sometimes because they both went to Penn State. But Chop Robinson can be defined as a freak. What if the Niners traded up for Brock Bowers? At some point, you have to plan for the post-George Kittle days. Why not bring in a player who is built like George Kittle, who's even a better receiver than George Kittle was at this age, not the blocker that Kittle's been or that Kittle is, but a generational tight end who I think could be an impact player for the next decade. And then if the Niners really want to get a corner, Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo, he's a freak. And I think he's going to be a stud. He, too, a plug-and-play player from the jump who ran a 4-3 40-yard dash, had a bunch of pass breakups, set the school record for pass breakups, by the way, and is an insane athlete who can play man and he can play zone. Here is a trade idea that I have that I put together here, and it's a move with the Denver Broncos, and it's a move that I want to talk about here that I think could make some sense for San Francisco, where the Broncos do not have a second-round pick. And let's just call a spade a spade. And maybe the Broncos don't move Patrick Sertan. What about this move between San Francisco and Denver, where the Broncos receive 31st overall, 63rd overall in the second round, and then 124 overall? That's enough for the Niners to maybe move up to number 12, or they package those picks to get into the teens? That's something I think that could work out for San Francisco. So with that, let's ask you this. Which of these moves do you like the most? Blockbuster trades, blockbuster trade targets. Let me know down in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching the show. All right. People trying to take over our studio, Chip? Here's our Super Chat menu. All Super Chats get a shout-out. $10 gets you in the March jersey raffle. $20, 20 push-ups or jumping jacks. $50 to get on our Niners helmet here. This thing's iconic. $100 for a shotgun or a beer bond. We're up to $7 in Super Chats right now. David Locklear said none. Stay up at 31 Abdul Muhammad likes the blockbuster trades. Good stuff. Segment number three. Going to be a really good one here. I have my top prospects at every single position that the Niners could draft. JJ119 said trade back. Weird. Konishiwa, Chase Sr. from Joji. What up, Joji? Rob Smith, what are people's thoughts on trading back? If you trade back, you better be one of the first picks of that second round. That's kind of my philosophy there because then, let's say you have pick number 33, first pick on day two of the draft in that second round. Yeah, 33 and 63. Two really good players that you could get there, and maybe you also get a pick... In the 50s? Gump Wolf, $20 super chat. Maybe that'll wake some of you up. Hi, Faithful, Chase and Chip. What is up, Gump Wolf? Thanks for supporting the show, my man. What if Gump Wolf wins another jersey? We sent him the Brock Purdy jersey. Gump Wolf, did you get it? It's probably taken a while because the mail service across the country right now is a joke. Gump Wolf, thank you for that. $20, let's do some jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 
Rob Smith saying, I want Chop Robinson. Really good player. I like him a lot. Ready for segment number three? Draft prospects for the Niners coming up next. Get those questions in, by the way. Hashtag 49ers. We're sending a super chat. Going to need your questions here on the show. Who are your deep sleepers for this draft? Stay tuned. We're going to do a deep dive into some draft prospects coming up here in a second. Go get Sertan and Shop from I3. Sertan and Shop, can you imagine that? <coughs> As a draft hall for San Francisco? What a night that would turn into. Ready to rock? Shane, AZ49ers Empire, using the hashtag 49ers. Him, what's your email? Chase at chatsports.com. Chase at chatsports.com. All right, let's do it. Segment number three coming up right now. Coming up here on the San Francisco 49ers Report, my top draft prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft for San Francisco. These are the best players and my favorite players that the Niners can realistically get. And keep that in mind here, that this is a realistic list of players that the Niners can select. And some of these players, of course, would require a trade-up. And I definitely want to educate you on some of the top players at these positions but this is why you're not going to see a Malik Neighbors or a Marvin Harrison Jr., some of those upper echelon players in addition to quarterbacks because the Niners set with quarterback with Brock Purdy. Let's begin with the big pressing need on this football team, and that's along the offensive line. First, with some top offensive tackle prospects. Now, contradicting statement here, I don't think the Niners are going to be able to trade up for Joe Alt or Olu Fashanu. Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, just a terrific, generational, multi-time Pro Bowl level talent coming out of Notre Dame. With his size, he moves so well. A lot of the same qualities for Fashanu, who, if he came out in the 2023 draft, probably would have been a top 10 pick. And this year, depending on how many quarterbacks go early, both Alt and Fashanu could be top 10 selections, if not right on that cusp and right in that range. J.C. Latham, Talies Fuaga and Troy Fatanu, other really good offensive tackles in this deep offensive tackle class that probably are not going to be there for San Francisco. Again, you'd have to probably trade up. Fuaga is one of my favorite players on this list. And if he falls to like 15, 16, could San Francisco trade 31 and their second round selection at 63 to try to move up and get him? Just a really good athlete. So nasty for his size. Overall pro football focus grade this past year of 88.2 out of Oregon State. Pass blocking grade of 80. Run blocking grade of 90.9. He'd be a scheme fit for San Francisco because he's played in the zone scheme before. Can climb to that second and third level on some of those pool blocks. Shanahan obviously would ask him to do a lot of that. He could play tackle in the future guard right now or tackle right now and take over for Colton McKivitz. Zero sacks surrendered last year, two hits and 10 hurries. So Oltz and Fashanu, to reemphasize this, they could go inside the top 10 on the cusp of being in the top 10. Latham, Fuaga, Fatanu, they would require a trade-up. These players, though, could be in the Niners' range or a trade-up that wouldn't cost as much. Kingsley Suamata Ia at a BYU, another good scheme fit. He's a very experienced player as compared to Amarius Mims and Tyler Guyton, who have not played a lot at the college level, but Mims, Guyton, freak athletes, wonderful size, really everything that you want in an offensive tackle build 
the only thing. You have a Super Bowl-ready team right now, and I'm not sure if those players can be plug-and-play guys from the jump. Patrick Paul out of Houston is a good mover, and then Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame, highly recruited player when he went to South Bend. I'm more so projecting to be a second or third rounder. Maybe that could be a pick for the Niners a little bit later. A player to watch here in the second or third round, and a player, if he went in the first round, it would not surprise me at all just because he's 6'5", 326, is also a really good athlete, is Karan Amagaji. And he started playing football in high school. He's an extremely late bloomer, went to Yale, have to be very smart to have those Ivy League smarts. And maybe not right away, but at some point in the future, he could be a really special player in this league. Just like this is a deep offensive tackle class, this is also a very good interior offensive lineman class, both at the center spot and at the guard position. I think Jackson Powers Johnson is the best center in this draft class out of Oregon. Really like Graham Barton as well. Went to Duke, played center, played left tackle, shorter arms, so could be a guard at the next level. Jordan Morgan has been mocked to the Niners a ton. Played offensive tackle at Arizona. He, too, has shorter arms in the ninth percentile there. And sometimes I think we make a little bit too much of the shorter arms. But if he plays guard, that fulfills a big need for the Niners. Also a guy who played very, very well against players like Braylon Trice in the Pac-12. Cooper Beebe, offensive guard out of Kansas State. A player who moves and is very quick for being over 300 pounds, and then Zach Frazier, another really good center in this class. I don't think Jake Brendel is a long-term fit and the long-term option at center for the Niners. And $5 million per year is a little bit expensive for him. If Jackson Powers Johnson falls to the Niners at 31, are they going to be able to help themselves when they realize that JPJ could be an impact guy for the next decade? His pro football focus number is awesome this past year. Overall grade 84.3, pass blocking 90.6, Run blocking 85.2, no sacks, no hits, one hurry given up in 2023. And the Snyder's offensive line right now, you have Trent Williams, Aaron Banks. They're good. And I'm fine with the left side. I'm not okay with center because I think Jake Brendel's a little bit light. And against physical defensive tackles like Chris Jones, sometimes he can get pushed around a little bit. You bring back John Feliciano, fourth-ranked guard in run block win rate last year, 25th in pass block win rate. You're not paying him a lot of money. He was certainly serviceable. The Niners missed him in the Super Bowl once he went down, and Spencer Burford took over for him, and he could certainly get by for another year, but what he put out on Instagram last ride looks as though this could be his 10th and final season you need to find long-term stability along the offensive line. And you know my feelings on Colton McKivitz. I thought it was wild how Kyle Shanahan from the NFL owners meeting said, he has done a hell of a job at right tackle for us. We have a lot of confidence in him going into this year. He's one of the real leaders on our team. I thought he did a hell of a job playing this year. Is that the standard? A player who gave up 47 total pressures and nine sacks this year, 12 more pressures in the playoffs. He was the 47th highest graded tackle in the NFL. Please address offensive line in the NFL draft. Otherwise, I'm going to go gray, I might go bald, and I'm going to lose it, and the Niners might lose another big-time game because I think the lack of offensive line play in the trenches and them being weak there has led to them getting ousted in the playoffs the last couple of years. If you want the Niners to draft an offensive lineman, who's with me? I just lost it almost right there. I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Let's join together. We heard Jim Harbaugh this week talking about the offensive line, how the entire team depends on the offensive line. I hope Kyle Shanahan sees that clip. Another area of need for the Niners here, cornerback spot. And this draft class is top heavy at cornerback for outside guys. It is very deep, and you can get some really good slot nickel corners in the second, third, fourth, and fifth rounds. These are my top five corners in this draft class here. Quinian Mitchell out of Toledo. Kool-Aid McKinstry is my second favorite corner in this class. I also really like his teammate, Terion Arnold. I love the swagger in which Kool-Aid and Arnold play with. Nate Wiggins ran a 4-3, 40-yard dash. He's a little bit lighter, but is really good in coverage. And then Cooper DeGene, a rare member of the white cornerback club, is an exceptional athlete. 
We'll see if he plays safety or corner at the next level. But his measurables and his testing, even though he didn't officially test in the pre-draft process, I'm more so talking about the measurables here and how he's tested in the past with how quick, athletic, springy he is. I think that he's going to have a long career in the NFL just because that all translates to the next level. Quinian Mitchell, favorite corner in this draft class for a couple of different reasons. He's a ball hawk. He had 17 pass breakups this past year, set the school record for pass breakups, and he could have went back for another year. He had one interception and three drops, so actually officially catching the football on those interception opportunities, little bit of an issue, but I have a lot of confidence in the player. Zone coverage, man coverage, you can play them both. 88.7 on the man grade, 85.9 on the zone grade, a lot of pass rating, a 51.1 completion rate, 43.5, a coverage grade, 91.6. Pro Football Focus overall grade, 91 and a half. Insert the eggplant emoji with the little water sprinkle there. BPA strategy. BPA stands for best player available. The Niners could go this route if one of those corners falls to 31. For instance, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Niners had a formal meeting with him at the NFL Combine. Coming off a of Jones fracture surgery. He still ran like a 4-4, sub-4-4 at his pro day before getting surgery. So, a lot of people think he's going to be able to come back for training camp. He's my second favorite corner in this class. If you get him at 31, I wouldn't hate the pick. And this Niners secondary, in particular the cornerback position, some question marks here. Charvarius Ward, Diamador, Lenore, I love them both at outside corner and in the slot. Lenore can play the outside. Ambry Thomas, a little bit of a question mark. Up next, my top wide receivers. Again, this doesn't include... Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., because they're not going to be around. Nor is Roma Dunze, who I think is a terrific player coming out of Washington. Adane Mitchell, outside of that big three, is my favorite wide out in this class. Excellent size at 6'4", great speed. I think he's going to be a number one in this league, and whichever team drafts him, they're getting a steal. Brian Thomas, Really fast for his size as well. Xavier Worthy set the record for the fastest 40-yard dash in the history of the combine at 421, but he's under 170 pounds. Trey Franklin, Malachi Corley, they're bigger and they've run fast. And that's the theme of this wide receiver class here. A lot of guys who have good bulk, good size, but they're very fleet of foot. My next grouping of favorite outside X wide receivers, Xavier Leggett, out of South Carolina, terrific accent, by the way. Keon Coleman out of Florida State, jump ball wide receiver. If you want somebody on the outside who can go up and get it, Jalen Polk, burner. Devontae Walker, burner. And Jalen McMillan, I like his speed too. Now, this isn't to say that I'm concerned about the Niners wide receiver depth chart, but is this the last year that we're going to see Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel play together? You also want to... Maybe sign Jawan Jennings to a contract extension. So do you plan ahead here because you can't pass up on a really good wide receiver who can be a part of this offense as the third or fourth guy and you start to plan ahead a little bit with the freak player? Keep that in mind. This wide receiver class, loaded and deep. If you want some slot wide receivers, Roman Wilson, Lad McConkey, Ricky Pearsall, Wilson out of Michigan, McConkey out of Georgia, Pearsall out of Florida. Those are very solid slot options, but I think the Niners might be set there because Jawan Jennings is there, and then Debo operates out of the slot a little bit. So, too, does Christian McCaffrey. Make sure you subscribe to the program for a year-round and daily coverage of the San Francisco 49ers. We are 232 people away from 132,000 subscribers. How quickly can we get there? It's up to you. Hit that sub button. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. If you're looking at, for the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed, Game Time is the solution, and it's the only solution. Why, Chase? Because it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. This app, easy to use, and it's quick to use. The other ticketing apps, sometimes they take forever to just get some tickets. I don't have time for that noise. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. 
And you can get tickets to football games, basketball games, baseball games, but also outside of that, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. There are zone deals for big-time savings. The game-time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CHATSPORTS, $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem that code CHATSPORTS, lowest price guaranteed. Let's talk some defensive players here, and we still have some more offensive players to get to, tight ends and running backs. Top edge rushers that the Niners would be able to select here. Layatu Latu out of UCLA, really good athlete, a little bit concerned about the neck. Chop Robinson, an insanely quick first step, just a freak athlete who ran just so well for being 250 pounds. Darius Robinson out of Mizzou has some good bend. Marshawn Nealon, a good player out of Western Michigan, smaller school guy. And then Adisa Isaac out of Penn State has been overshadowed a little bit by Chop Robinson. Another player I like, but he tested very poorly, was slow, but very productive this past year for Washington. And maybe his game speed's a little bit faster, but some people thought maybe a first round pick, maybe a second round pick. I think he's sliding down draft boards because he ran slow is Braylon Trice out of Washington. Top defensive tackles. I do think this is a big need for San Francisco and the good news for them could be a good player at their choosing. Byron Murphy out of Texas, Tavondre Sweat out of Texas, Sweat slower, a lot heavier, more of a run-plugging, run-stuffing defensive tackle. Not sure he's a great scheme fit just because I think he's more so of a nose tackle type, old school type of big, beefy defensive tackle. Jerzon Newton hasn't been able to test in the pre-draft process, but put a lot of good stuff on film for Illinois. Michael Hall out of UNC, uh, out of Ohio State, excuse me, so don't mind that. Uh, Michael Hall out of Ohio State, very good player. I've talked about him with Larry Kruger before, and then Braden Fisk out of Florida State. His testing numbers were out of this world. Niners defensive line depth chart, still going to run with the 4-3 defense, I would imagine, under Nick Sorensen. Maybe they have some stand-up edge rushers a little bit more, though, with players like Leonard Floyd, your Tur Gross Matos in the fold. Malik Collins, he's half the price of Eric Armstead, but he's been more productive the last couple of years. Javon Hargrave had seven sacks in 2023, down from 11 the season before that. Hopefully he rebounds a little bit. I think defensive tackle could also be an option at number 31. You need to get some young talent there because right now you don't have that young talent. Malik Collins, 28. Javon Hargrave on the other side of 30 years old. You want that developmental defensive tackle, and Kalia Davis has been injured a lot. Top linebackers, Junior Colson out of Michigan, dog. Edger and Cooper out of Texas A&M, just insane sideline to sideline speed. Peyton Wilson, a great athletic tester, but a bevy and a long list, a Santa list of injury issues going back to high school. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, his pops was an all-pro in the league for the Philadelphia Eagles, and then Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State. Niners in an interesting spot here because you're not sure when... Dre Greenlaw is going to come back. They have some Dre Greenlaw insurance and Devondre Campbell from Green Bay, who was a first-team All-Pro in 2021 and said the last couple of years he's been misused. So he's anxious to show that he's still got it. Backup options include D. Winters, Jalen Graham, Ezekiel Turner, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, but the last two players more so special teams types. Not a massive need at the linebacker spot. Could be a best player available situation. Junior Colson's there. Pick number 63, he's there in the third round, and you're not sure what the future is of Dre Greenlaw because he's a little bit expensive. Maybe you go in that direction. Top tight ends, Brock Bowers. I think he's going to fall in the draft just because I think a lot of quarterbacks are going to go inside the top five, top ten, causing a lot of the wide receivers and offensive linemen to maybe slide down draft boards a little bit. And if he's available in the 20s, my goodness, could he be your future George Kittle replacement? Jatavion Sanders out of Texas. He's met with the Niners multiple times in the pre-draft process. They have shown some interest in him. Good athlete, didn't necessarily translate to quality testing numbers in Indianapolis, but a third-round pick 
maybe you decide to do that. Theo Johnson out of Penn State as the Nittany Lions continue to develop and groom some really good prospects. Cade Stover out of Ohio State. And a player who I really like is Jared Wiley. I think that he could be a really good pass catcher at the next level. You have to start planning for the post-George Kittle days. I love Kittle, love the personality, love the swagger. The production in 2023 was awesome. First 1,000-yard season since 2019. But this is a player who's getting older. He has had injury issues in the past, and he's very expensive. So you have to have that contingency plan. And I don't think that Braden Willis or Camelotu are those contingency plans. In fact, I didn't really like how the Niners decided to draft two tight ends and no offensive linemen in the draft last year. Top running backs. Need a backup behind Christian McCaffrey because you can't count on Elijah Mitchell. I like Jordan Mason, but this coaching staff hasn't really trusted him. Jonathan Brooks out of Texas, good player, shifty. Blake Corum, just an all-around back, a little bit shorter. Not really a three-down guy, but I think that he's going to be a good player at the next level. Really adds to the culture. Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. Bucky Irving out of Oregon. Trey Benson out of Florida State. Good players there. Isaac Garendo is a fascinating player out of Louisville. He is lightning quick. He ran a 4-3-3, 40-yard dash at 221 pounds. So, for instance there, Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1, 40-yard dash at 167 pounds, I think it was. So you have a player who's much heavier, much more physical, running almost a second slower than Xavier Worthy. He's a decisive back, home run hitter. He can pass protect a little bit. Does have injury issues with hamstring stuff. I'll also throw another name out there. The USC running back is also really intriguing to me. Um, His name is escaping me right now. Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is a player that I think could be a good player for the Niners too. Christian McCaffrey has two more years left on that contract. Give me a follow on X. Give me a follow on Instagram. I put up a lot of short-form content on there in addition to the long-form content that you just watched. Appreciate the support. Thanks for rocking with us. Have a fantastic day. All right, our Super Chat menu. Here it is. Got this mailbag coming up. Last chance. Get those questions in. We could use some more. Yeah, we could use some more questions. As we pivot to our mail sack, David Lockley or Frank Gore's son, Romeo Talon, what's the knock on Garendo? Injuries? How is this guy sliding down? Injuries, exactly. A lot of hamstring stuff. Missed a lot of time. All Super Chats get a shout out. $10. You enter our March jersey raffle. $20. We'll do push-ups and jumping jacks. $50 to sign our Niners helmet. 100 for a shotgun or a beer bong. And I'm not going to lie, I got some happy dads here to my left. It's Thursday. I'm excited to watch the NCAA tournament. Can't be scared out here. Let's do it. Hashtag 49ers or Super Chat. Last call to be a part of our mailbag. How about T.O.'s son from Shane? I don't think he's going to get drafted, but maybe as a UDFA. Same thing with Frank Gore Jr. Could be a late round guy, though. Could be a late round guy. I'm ready to get right into it if you are. A few more questions. Hashtag 49ers. Send in a super chat. Saw Shane get one in there. Romeo, if you want to use hashtag 49ers. You could certainly do that. Romeo, shout out to the Diner fam. How do we culturally rebound from that Super Bowl loss? We'll include that in the mailbag. What's going on? Cool. 
What round is Jerry Rice's son projected? I think day three, which means third round and on. I don't think he's going to be a second round guy. But third round would be my best guess and estimate. How much will Patrick Sertan's contract be from Mahal Patel? It's a good question. You know, Legereus Sneed just got $19 million per, and Sertan is the better player. So I think $20 million plus is the starting point there. I grow wary of paying corners that much money. I really do. Trying to get your questions up. A little bit of technical difficulties right now, but we continue to move forward. Watching a little baseball right now. Astros 4 nothing over the Yankees. Bottom four. Jose Altuve at the dish. Nestor Cortez on the bump. It's gotten low-key shelled. Going to build those super chats that came in so that we can include them in our mailbag. Who's excited for baseball season? Type me. Type me and which team do you root for? I'm curious because we have people watching from all around the country. Forty Niners using the hashtag Forty Niners. That's from Forty Niners Zone. Good stuff right there. Nick Dolfer, what's up, Nick? He said me, San Francisco Giants. Nice, Nick. Did you get your football? Did you get the custom football that we sent you? David said Atlanta. Oh, I hate the Braves. Tony DeWeese, San Francisco Giants. Shane Diamondbacks. Oh, my gosh. I'm a Phillies fan. I'll never get over that loss. Rather unique. Go Yankees. Yankees getting pounded right now. Rather unique. Shane, you're just breaking my heart. Defending NL champs. Yes, I know. Phillies choke games six and seven at home. Despicable. David said Marlins. Wow, that's interesting. 49ers zone, go Giants, Jeremiah, Red Sox. Do you think Jake Moody is the Niner kicker of the future? Yeah, I thought he improved last year. I thought he hit some clutch kicks. My man hit two 50-plus yard field goals in the Super Bowl. I know he got the extra point blocked on the low trajectory. That was on him, but still. Romeo using the hashtag 49ers. Mises Lee, Atlanta Braves. Rob Smith, Mets. Joji Rangers, Kanishiwa. Nice, coming off that World Series championship. Astros from Romeo. I don't like the Astros either, but I like you, Romeo.
Our poll question right now, would you pay Brock Purdy more than $40 million per year? 66% yes. It's kind of held firm there. Oh, Joji, Japan is in mourning over Ipe and Shohei. Joji, is Shohei guilty? Why for yes and for no? Sketchy stuff. Nick Dolph for using hashtag 49ers. What are the chance we get Simmons? Talking Justin Simmons. Technology's fucking up our Clemson plan, Chip. Should we target cornerback or offensive lineman in the first round? How would we be able to afford Sertan? 49 out of zone, bringing the heat, man. Tony DeWeese, I think Purdy will get 35 to 40 mil. A lot of good questions coming in and good comments. Ipe will never find employment in Japan from Joji. Yeah, it's a wild story, man. Wild story. All right, let's get the eight. Here we go. Coming up on today's San Francisco 49ers report, we are taking your questions and your hot takes right here on the show. This is what happens when you're a real one and you subscribe to the channel. We chop it up with all of you because we're the most interactive and engaging Niners channel right here on YouTube. And we appreciate all of our viewers, our fans, and our supporters. That includes Alexander Ryan who gets us started. Thoughts on the 49ers missing out on Lewis Reese. Damn it, as a rugby fan, would have loved for him to come to the Niners. He signed with the Kansas City Chiefs and... I like what the Chiefs do. They take chances on players. Andy Reid has always done this throughout his career, whether it's a prospect or it's somebody with some legal issues. He just did it with Matt Areza, the punter, and they let Tommy Townsend, who's a really good punter, go, and he got paid by the Houston Texans, and now they're bringing in a former rugby player. Philadelphia Eagles did this a couple of years ago with Jordan Mailata in this past year, third highest graded tackle in all of football, but yeah. Wasn't for the Niners there, Alexander. Glad you brought that up, though. It's a fun talking point. Romeo, shout out to the Niner fam. How do we culturally rebound from that Super Bowl loss? I think a lot of people don't talk about this enough. The human nature element of getting your heart broken. Sometimes it takes people a long time to get over a relationship. If you get dumped or you call for the breakup or the divorce with your significant other, right? Imagine... Working so hard, putting your body through all of that, going through the mental and physical rigors of a football season, and you are this close to the Super Bowl. And not only do you lose, you lose in overtime to Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, who you lost to before. And you know you lost that game when you were the better team, in my opinion, and you shot yourselves in the foot on numerous occasions. Everybody can bring up the officiating all you want. Christian McCaffrey can't fumble. Jake Moody can't miss that PAT. You can't fumble the punt. You have to capitalize and at least get three off the Patrick Mahomes interception. Multiple penalties. The Niners cost themselves that game, which makes it more difficult to get over something like that. How do you rebound? You look at the roster and you say, the window is starting to close. We have a very elite team, really good coach, 
We've been so successful as an organization. We know what it takes to be here. We won a couple of heroic clutch performance games against the Packers and the Lions to get to the Super Bowl. We didn't play our best football. And as players get older, as the window starts to close, the pressure gets ratcheted up a little bit. But you look across the team and you say, we're still maybe the most talented team in football. Let's recover the body, recover the mind. This is the business. This is what we signed up for. This is the reality of football. You can't win every single year. And let's complete the quest for six together. 49er zone. What do you think we should target in the first round? I'm always a best player available type of person. So if a really good player falls to the Niners, I think you go with the best player available there. And that could be a Kool-Aid McKinstry. It could be a Nate Wiggins. It could be a Cooper DeGene. Whoever falls to them. It could be a Braden Fisk, defensive tackle out of Florida State. It could be one of the offensive linemen. You could trade up to get a player who you really want because that gets dictated by some of the quarterbacks that go in the top five, top ten. Thus, other players slide, and you have to trade up from 31 to 22 to get your guy. You got to do it. So, obviously, offensive line is the biggest need for this team. Cornerback is the number two biggest need. Defensive tackle, to me, is number three. Of course, as part of the offensive line, right tackle, guard, center. I'd like to see them address all those positions with some really good young talent. Jacob Martin, how much will a Marshawn Lattimore contract be? We actually have some contract details on Marshawn Lattimore if we're able to pull that up. If not, no big deal at all. No guaranteed money after 2024. For the Saints, if they traded him pre-June 1, $31.3 million in dead money, 16.7 in cap savings. They trade him post-June 1, 10.5 in dead money, 3.9 in cap savings. But again, no guaranteed money after 2024. As for what he would cost this year alone, let me just take a look at that really quickly. He did get a big contract from New Orleans. He's one of the highest paid corners in the game. He has a cap hit of $14.6 million. Faithful shirts still on sale. How do you get them? You use that link down below. Chatsports.com slash 49ers faithful. Somebody watched the show and said, Chase, that promo code doesn't work. I can't believe you're doing this. It's not a promo code. It's a link. Chatsports.com slash 49ers faithful. And as I always say, that link for that great deal, this awesome Niners gear, is available in the show notes right below this video, the written portion, as well as in the comment section attached to the pinned comment. Mihul Patel, how much will a Patrick Sertan contract be? Well, Ajarius Sneed just got $19 million per year on that sign and trade from Kansas City to the Tennessee Titans, and Patrick Sertan is the better player. So I think the starting point is going to be $20 million per year for a guy who's already been a pro bowler and an all-pro in this league. Foxy Steady, if the Niners don't address offensive line, they don't have a chance of winning a Super Bowl. I agree. Have to address the offensive line. And you look at the offensive line depth chart here, I'm fine with the left side. Trent Williams, Aaron Banks, you're in a good spot there. But for Kyle Shanahan to say this past week that Colton McKivitz has, quote, done a hell of a job at right tackle for us, we have a lot of confidence in him going into this year. He's the exact type of guy that we want. I thought he did a hell of a job playing this year. That's ridiculous. That can't be the standard. Colton McKivitz gave up 47 total pressures and nine sacks this year. He gave up 12 pressures in three playoff games. He was the 47th highest graded tackle in the NFL. Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch need to see that clip from Jim Harbaugh where he talked about how the whole team is based upon the offensive line and the success of it. Mr. Block Ice, do you think as far as the draft, our main focuses are the lines on both sides, then probably corner? Yeah, the biggest needs for me, offensive tackle, because I think offensive tackle, defensive end, and quarterback, those are the three most important positions. Obviously, quarterback's number one. And then you can argue offensive tackle and edge rusher. You want to be able to protect your quarterback and then get after the opposing quarterback. So offensive tackle, number one. Offensive guard, number two. I honestly might say center number three and then cornerback right after that or corner instead of center. I just don't think Jake Brendel is fantastic. I think you can do better than a guy who's making five mil per year. Romeo, is it time to adjust our offensive scheme? 
hasn't produced in the Super Bowl that we deserved in the last three years. It's not altering the offensive scheme. The Niners had the number one overall offense in the NFL this past year, and they averaged nearly 30 points per game. It's an explosive offense. It's a physical offense. It works. There's a reason why Kyle Shanahan's offense has been replicated by so many other coaches across the NFL, from Sean McVay to Matt LaFleur to Bobby Slowick to Zach Robinson now with the Atlanta Falcons, who's their new OC under Raheem Morris. The Kyle Shanahan offense is what everybody pretty much wants at the NFL level. But I don't like the offensive line protections at times, and that's something that J.T. O'Sullivan has talked about. And if there's something that you change there, it's the offensive line protections. Nick Dolfer, what is the chance that we get Justin Simmons? The Niners have shown interest in him. The Niners have shown interest in safeties in free agency. Justin Simmons, Julian Blackman. Do you go Quandre Diggs? Do you go Eddie Jackson, who's an older player and was a first-team All-Pro in 2018 and a Vic Fangio type of player? And Brandon Staley is a Vic Fangio guy, Vic Fangio disciple. I'd say it's somewhat low, but man, if he wants to take less money, because he made a lot of money last year and in years before that on that contract extension, he improves your defense mightily. Make sure you subscribe to the show to be a part of our future mailbags. Hit that bell icon, turn on those notifications. Therefore, when we go live, when we push out a video, you'll be notified and you can come hang out here with us. All right, last call for Super Chats. Two-minute warning here. Bill, where is Diddy on the run? <laughs> Did you see LeBron was on IG Live? I don't know when this is from, but he was like, man, those Diddy parties are crazy. Really? I don't know. They could be years old. Oh, I don't know how no. old it is, but apparently he's at least been to one of Diddy's parties in the past. Two-minute super chat shot clock. Not a party I'd want to be at. I did see a great meme that I put on my Instagram and Twitter. It was P. Diddy, signed by the Philadelphia Eagles, Tush push specialist. <laughs> it's like, wow. The humor of the internet never fails. That's never fails. Dave Zobel, players should take less money to play for a Super Bowl team. I mean, if you win, you can make more money outside of football. Yeah, making more money outside of football, easier said than done. If I'm a veteran, though, like I would sacrifice a few mil to go to a team to win because I don't really want to put in all that work and I don't want to put my body through that if I'm going to be on a bad team just because I'm getting a check. I want the highs. I want the adrenaline. I want the personal and team success because that's what I live for. I love to win. AZ 49er said, yo, Chase. Yo, AZ. Draco, they need to put Jake Moody at linebacker for Greenlaw. Can you imagine Jake Moody at linebacker? A kicker at linebacker, they'd probably piss themselves. I mean, you might as well throw me out there at that point. Who's a better linebacker, me or Jake Moody? Yeah. I don't know. Chip or Moody? Could be. It might be me. Chip Moody. That's a good name. Chip Moody. Chip Moody. All right, Chip 30 seconds Moody. left on the two-minute clock. Chip did go to Clemson, by the way. Clemson playing in the Sweet 16 tonight against Arizona. Let's go, baby. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Any Clemson alum, Clemson fans in here? Romeo said chip for linebacker. Nice. I'll, I'll put it all out on the line. I'll tell you that, man. I'm doing Draco, everything I, I got to for the squad. I like this from Draco. They should draft Chip, Chase, and Draco. I agree. Linebacking core of Chip, Chase, and Draco? I don't know if I want to hit people. I'll, I'll, I'll get hit, though, and play quarterback. How about that? Okay. Dave Zobel, offensive line help. Leon Moody would be the best tackler since Montana. <laughs> All right. Two-minute Super Chat shot clock has expired. I hope everybody out there has a fantastic weekend. I'm going back to Pennsylvania to see my grandma, my dad, my sister. Looking forward to that. But the content's still going to come your way right here on the show. Don't forget to subscribe. For Chip, I'm Chase. We out. See ya.